All right, everybody, it's craft time once again. So in uh, today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to make one of these cool tree of life hangings. Um, the skill, once you learn it, is adaptable to smaller circles, um, necklaces and things like that, or even larger um, uh, embroidery hoops and things. And it's pretty vers versatile technique. So in your kit, you're gonna have a ring um, big or small. You'll have some wire. Now this is 26 gauge gold tone wire. Um, most of the kits should be cut. I am intending to have them all cut. So just be cautious though. The ends might be a little sharp. And you will also have a packet of gemstones, semi-precious gemstones mixed with glass beads. And these will all be uh, randomly assorted in the kits and um, a hanging thread. Now you can switch this out, of course, too, if you want to use a ribbon or you want to use a piece of the wire or some other way to hang said um, tree of life. Now to get started, you want to take your wires. You can use five or seven wires, depending on how big you want your tree to be. Um, the wires are about 18 inches long, and they're very curly and sort of tangly. You have to be pretty calm when you do this, so just relax. The things you will need are some wire cutters like these, or you can use utility kitchen scissors. And this is completely optional. These are just needle nose pliers, but you don't really need them for this. It's only if you really feel like you want to and you're skilled with the pliers. And you can um, tape if you feel like you're gonna need to tape it down if the wires get too crazy on you. All right, so the first thing you want to do is start making your tree trunk. Now you see I've put two on this big ring and how we attach them is first we take the wire and we smooth it, not too vigorously, to try and straighten the wire. You're just aligning the molecules so that they're not so crazy bendy. And you're going to take the ends, line them up. It's not a super precise science because you will be trimming these ends off. And since it's wire, it bends. But it can be a little bit chaotic once you get all these on here, so just be patient. And now you're gonna take each tail and wrap it around the ring. That one tail went around once. This one's gonna go around once. And then I'm going to go around one more time. Whoops, for each. We kinda wanna keep those separate, like so. And then you're gonna bring the ends up together. Two-handed approach here. And you can hold the ring like this if you want, and then you're gonna twist these. It's up to you how you like to twist the wire. I like to take them separate and take my two fingers and twist them. So one, two, three, four, approximately five twists, and then straighten it out, and then slide it on down the line. So we are going to add, as I said, five to seven. This is where you can't, don't let yourself get too crazy because they will flip around on you. So you need a little patience too, wrapping it around. All right, holding, separating, see I'm pinching, one, two, three, four, five. Kind of like a twist tie. This is really soft wire, and then slide it over. You can see there's the welded joint on this, and that's gonna be the top. So don't let it get stuck on there. See, straightening my wire out. 
But as I was saying, you can use a thicker gauge of wire if you have a bigger ring or thinner or different colors. Um, wire gauge, the bigger the number, the thinner it is. And the thicker stuff is going to be harder to use without tools. So if you had an 18 gauge wire, it's going to be more challenging to just do with your hands. That's why I chose this, so to just start for the first time, we'll use a softer wire. Pinching, one, two, three, four, five. All right. And so we have one, two, three, four, five. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to show you five. Well, all right, I'll add six. It's up to you if you want to do five or seven. Straighten out the wire. Pull it up. See how these get in the way and they'll make you crazy, so make them get out of your way. Wrap each tail around. Right. Straighten them again. And twist. One, two, three, four. Okay, once we have the bundle, now this is gonna become your tree trunk, this part right here. So you're gonna take the whole wad and you're gonna pinch near the bottom and then you're gonna twist this whole, all the strands. You can grab it up near the middle, you can grab it up near the end, however you wanna do it. And you just start twisting it all. And this is where if you are, need an extra bit of grip, you can use the pliers but you're only going to twist about halfway up the circle. Then you can uh, shape it. Now you can see that this is not a very thick trunked tree. The more wires you have down here, the thicker the tree is going to be. So I like to put a little bend in my tree maybe, like so. Then what you're going to do is you're going to separate all these because these are going to become the branches. So you can see this guy, it's a perfect example of that one. Just You just twist it right back around if it comes loose. The more you do that, the more you make of these and practice, you'll find that it's pretty easy to do. So now you're gonna take pairs of wires just go slow so that you don't frustrate yourself. You could tape this down to your work spot if that's easier for you. Because you can see once you twist it, they get tangled at the ends. And so you have to untangle them. It doesn't matter that much what two uh, wires go with what you know, if that was the original pair or not. If you're really precise and that matters to you, you can figure that out. So then I have six branches, as you can see. And then what you're going to do is that same procedure, it's pinch and you're gonna twist and twist. And now this, because it's the branch, you can twist it however far out you want. The idea is not to load this up with tons and tons of beads. And now I have about this much space, about a half an inch from the end. And now I'm going to take my beads and you can mix and match. If you only want to use gemstones like I did on here, you're welcome to do that. If you want to mix in some of these other beads, you're welcome to do that as well. And you find the hole in the bead, stirring it on, and 
you <laughs> look at that. You can determine how many you want. So you'll be using all your fine motor skills and yes, lots of patience. So don't do this if you're um, stressed or you're in a hurry. It's a little bit time consuming. It's a little bit meditative. So just take your time. Once you've got the branch where you want it, you're gonna wrap that tail end around pretty tight. One, two, at least three times. See, I did it on this side. Now I'm gonna come back around and do it on the other side of the wire. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. This is the reason why you need to cut these. So then you're just gonna cut that off and you're set. And the other branches, you just work your way around until all the branches are done. You can take, you can do your branches. You, if you wanted, you could take three wires and twist it together. You can form all your branches first, if you like, by twisting. Now, because this is a bigger ring, um, if we had a more demonstration time, I would have put seven, maybe even 12 wires on here. But on this one, you can count how many there are. You can see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that one. So let's keep making some branches here. And no, it doesn't matter whether you twist clockwise or counterclockwise. And you can um, vary the lengths of the branches. One reason you might not want to do all your branches at one time is because the wires do get tangled and it might be easier just to go from left to right. If you are right-handed, it might be easier if you're left-handed to go from left to right. Now remember, keep centering the whole thing because it still moves and this can be the top. Or if you feel like it's uh, safer to put it at the bottom, you can put it at the bottom. And then you can have your tree off center if you like. And so, I'll just show you a few more. Woo, look at my beads rolling away. I guess the building's not level. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna put a little bead on there. Two little beads. And of course, if you don't like the beads that I have provided, feel free to switch those up too. <laughs> the janitor is not going to be happy. All right. And then once they're on, you just wrap it around. See, so I go to one side. I just like to do both sides. You sure don't have to if you don't want to, but. Wrap it around there several times so that it's secure. And know that it is going to be moving around a lot while you're working. Plus, I'm standing up, so it's probably not how you will be working. And there you go. Bunch them all up and trim. So you will work your way around. And you see how you're forming the tree. Each branch is a pair of wires that gets twisted to however long you want it. And then you leave a little small section at the end, half an inch, quarter of an inch. And that's where you attach the beads. And that is all there is to it. So I'm not going to do this whole thing because of time constraints. But then when you're finished, you can, this is just some embroidery floss. Like I said, there'll be something in there if you'd like to use it. If not, you can use your wire to make a hanging device. 
but I just tied a knot on the end of this. And so you can see how I have taken the branches and split them apart and added the beads all the way around. If this tutorial is not satisfactory, there are loads of these online and should be very easy to do. Like I said, once you know how to do it, it's easy to adapt to many different sizes of rings and different sorts of beads and gemstones. So happy crafting everyone. Until next time. Bye.